Hello, my name is Teresa Valentino, and I just wanted to kind of introduce you to the girl in the before pictures. Now that I'm doing the James Hergott's Radical Body Transformation on Amazon Prime, I'm competing in that. Um, so I kind of want to document my journey and explain like where I'm starting out and where I hope to go so that I, I know that this can be inspirational for other people because I'm super, super excited. So on the one hand, it does suck to be walking around uncomfortable in your skin, not feeling good about the way your body is, right? And it's kind of like, oh, why don't I make a video about, hi, I'm a before photo. Hi, I'm, a, I'm the girl in the before picture. Aren't I horrible? You know what I mean? But really, I the reason that I'm able to do this and take this leap and and because it was a huge leap of faith for me to join this radical body transformation. Make no make no mistake about that. I don't know how I'm going to eat for the rest of the month because I paid for a personal trainer, but I'm trusting that it's going to work out and and I believe it will. So, how did I take that kind of leap of faith? You know what I mean? If you feel so bad about yourself, like you're the girl in the before picture right now, like how do you take that leap of faith? And what it came down to for me was I had struggled over to get to the swimming pool. Uh, this is how I just hit bottom on it. Like I had a day, I had a bad day trying to go to the swimming pool and then I was not able to swim after I got there, long story short. And I just melted the hell down on my whole entire life. I was glad that, you know, I've become a, the kind of person who just looked like with my social skills are good enough that I just walked away from people before I started screaming <laughs> to the sky, like either fix my life or just fucking kill me because I can't keep doing this. Like on that day, I had taken my walker on two buses. It took me almost an hour to get 1.3 miles. That drives me bananas in and of itself. Like I remember when I could ride a bike, you know what I mean? I could get on a bike and ride there in a matter of minutes. No must, no fuss. No trying to negotiate with stupid people who don't want to move over so I can put my walker in the disabled section on the goddamn bus. Like four bus trips to go a total of 2.6 miles. It's gonna take me two hours. That's nonsense. It makes me nuts. So it's a lot of confrontations and hassles over nothing, just trying to get the walk around and off the bus. So on that particular day, of course, it was a hassle getting there. And I got there and I was not able to swim and it just broke my heart because I felt like swimming is my last chance to get my health back. Like I really can't walk enough to do, I can't ride a bike, I can't do this other stuff. I can't stand up very well, but in the water, I'm completely free of my pain. Like I'm weightless and free and I can do everything. It's beyond, it's beyond just the physical fitness aspect of it. Although that, like when I can swim every day, I weight just peels off my body even without a diet. So that's what I'm looking forward to. But it's just psychologically being unburdened, like unchained to the earth. Cause that's how I feel. Like I feel like, I, like this walker that I walk with is a ball and chain and it weighs what, 50 pounds, 35 pounds. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't want to be chained to the earth anymore. So I took two buses. Somebody hassled me on the way over there, which just stresses out my PTSD. And then I got there and I was not able to swim. I just watched a bunch of able-bodied people swimming and I was not able to swim and I had to leave and I just cried my guts out. It seems like such a small thing, but when that's your last and only chance, and even that was inadequate because that pool is only available two days per week. But that was the best I had come up with in terms of my research. I was not able to find another better alternative, but this other little secret swimming pool, I'm able to get to. So, um, and I can do this one every single day. But at the time, it was the best I could see. It was just that I had tried. I had tried everything I could think of and I needed to just relax and like come to that place of clarity inside myself that like my life would either sort itself out or end, either get straight or end, okay? Because I'm not just gonna sit in this apartment collecting social security and getting fatter and turning into Jabba the Hutt until I melt into the sidewalk and die. That's not gonna happen. Um, I need to either figure out some way to get it so that I can move around and do things in the world or I need to just peace out, that's it. That's all she wrote. So before I became aware of keto diet or how I would get to this other much cheaper, much easier, much more available swimming pool, see, 
I didn't have those two key pieces of information and it emotionally it just blanked me right out like I would rather die than live this way and honestly I got away from where people were and then I just screamed at the sky for a good 20 minutes which is not something I do um, because I just I like I couldn't see it I couldn't see how to move my life forward and I just wanted it to end so I lost a good 21 pounds since then, so I definitely feel better. Like my underwear are large now, my underwear are loose, that's very nice. Um, but they had gotten tight before, like I'm just back to where I was now. I'm just back to undoing the last 20, 25 pounds that I gained over the last two years of not being able to get out of my apartment. So, but then, hallelujah, I found out about the keto diet and that is super easy. Good Lord, I wish I had known I understand keto as a child. If they had taught me keto as a child or even as a teenager, even any time, like everything would have been different for me. If I had learned keto any time before like my early 30s when I got over 300 pounds, like holy crap, it would be a whole different ball game. But you know, there's a lot of ifs and buts, whatever. So it is what it is. And I can't, like I don't really have any regrets. I'm proud of the person that I've become. I'm really proud that, you know, I may be overweight, but I'm not a drug addict. I'm not a criminal. I'm not, you know, an abusive person to anybody. I just live my life and I do the best that I can. And I've done a great job. I've accomplished a lot of things. And I am really excited now that I can have a bucket list. So, like all my life, I have felt just so overwhelmed by everything that's happened to me and so busy trying to figure out how I would make it from one day to the next, really. Like on some level, I've just always been trying to survive. And even, like I said, the last two years, yeah, okay, I've had an apartment to live in and I've had enough money from my disability check to cover my apartment and get most of the way to the end of the month. But I really have no money beyond like my utilities and trying to make it like food and have weed to get to the month. Um, so that's about it. Uh, that's not really a great life for me. I feel like I'm capable of a lot more. So, but even so, just just like trying to decide between food and medication every month and it's it sucks not being able to like being 1.3 miles away from the pacific ocean and not being able to go there for eight months is screwed so once i hit bottom on this and i just kind of had to let go let god as they say i just kind of had to realize okay i've tried everything that i can think of i don't understand how to move forward how to lose weight how to become healthy without losing weight i just don't understand i do not know what to do fuck it and just let it go and you know what then i had like event it wasn't right away but then hey you know what i found out about the keto diet and once i found out about keto that was like a whole new world for me my second day on my keto diet felt like i had taken a goddamn happy pill literally day two the first day without carbs <gasps> it was like angels sang in the sky i felt like i could dance in the streets like my, my legs and back and hips were convinced me again that I was wrong, but my brain was sure I could just jump and dance. So, um, yeah, baby, I'm not coming off that keto diet for nothing. I don't care what they say. That keto diet is kicking it for me. Um, when I'm doing it correctly, I lose almost one pound a day on keto. So how about that? Um, especially if I can swim every day, which I can now. So that's, I'm, I feel so optimistic now that I'm kind of glad that I let go of everything because basically what ended up happening that day after I cried my guts out and after I screamed at the sky and felt like a crazy stupid loser disempowered in every way you know what if you feel like your body is not going to do what you needed to do that's that's just despair so after that what I kind of realized is I needed to embrace my past better I needed to like the part of me that had completely forgotten about what happened that was necessary for me to just keep marching forward as though nothing that's basically my parents after I got raped a bunch of times my mom expected me to just march forward like nothing happened because she didn't plan on dealing with it period so you know what I mean so that's how it's gonna go you got raped a bunch of times we're not gonna talk about that march okay and I was not able to not get fat about it because most girls who do get raped do get fat um, so that, you know, I just had to put that out of my mind. So that whole, it was kind of like a huge betrayal of myself, you know, and I had to do it. I had no choice. I would not have survived otherwise. So 
because I had put that all the way out of my mind and I had managed to survive, there was a part of me that was like unavailable to myself, kind of. Like I couldn't sort of understand that I was the person that those things had happened to on some visceral level. So there was kind of a disconnect. Like I, there aren't very many pictures of me as a child, but there are a couple of them. And when I see them, I kind of don't feel like that is me. I feel like I've seen her from over there because it's a long story, but during the abuse, a lot of times I was not in, I was like watching from a, some vantage point on the ceiling, like I was outside my body. So it was complicated. Like this has been complicated, but basically I just had to not be disgusted. I had to not blame myself for the abuse. I had to let go of a lot of the shame and the blame that was all placed on me. Um, and I just had to not hate myself for having forgotten such important things that happened to me. You know what I mean? It's like, think about it. If you had a friend that you got raped and then they just blew it off like that never happened and they didn't ever talk to you about it or try to help you with it or anything, that's kind of screwed, isn't it? So it's kind of hard to be your own friend on those terms, right? But, you know, I did the best that I could and now I'm cool with it. And that just like just like forgiving myself and accepting that I am the person that those terrible things happened to, that that was me and that all of that is real and somehow I survived it and here I am and it's fine and it's fine. That is, I don't know what to say, man. That's like a full circle of life. So that's where I feel like I've gotten my whole new lease on life. And this is not just a diet for me. It's like a chance to be unrobbed. Like I got robbed of my whole childhood and my youth when I was so good looking and young and, and my knees worked and I just got robbed on all of that. So um, now I'm making a bucket list as I think of things that I would just love to do and they don't even have to be practical at all. It can just be something that, yeah, I really wish I had the physical wherewithal to make that happen for myself. So first one, walk a runway and I'm pretty sure I can make that happen. My goal weight is going to be about 185, 180. Um, but, you know, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that once I get, because another thing I'm doing in, in this radical body transformation is I'm getting all my teeth fixed. Um, I've needed dental work for so long and I've not had any way to do it. But now the same new magical insurance policy that's giving me the free gym membership and the transportation to my doctor appointments is sending me to get all my teeth fixed. So that will be happening. I'm gonna have radical teeth transformation. Um, and then I'm gonna walk a runway. I'm gonna do it. Watch me do it. Watch me go to a modeling agency in Los Angeles or at least a class and learn how to do it, you know what I mean, and practice it. And then I'll go somewhere and somebody will hire me to walk a runway. There's a pink Balenciaga dress that is made out of feathers. That is just fucking phenomenal. I think Kate Blanchett has worn it once. I wanna wear that dress. Ride a BMX bike. Okay, there's a, there's a skate park right down the corner from me that I go over there and I watch all the young guys doing crazy little jumping, spinning around stuff on their BMX bikes. And some of that stuff I would never do, but some of it I totally would. You know, there's some of it, not all of it is going to break your neck. I totally want to do that. Okay, climb the aerial ladder. That is something that I did in Fire Academy, and I kind of sucked at it because I was terrified, but I was also super fat, and it's really hard for me. In turnout gear, which weigh, the turnout gear probably weighs 25 pounds, then the pack on your back, and then you got to climb up that 100-foot ladder. And the ladder, like, I wasn't prepared when I stepped out on that thing, but that joker bounces and sways in the breeze. And then there's a breeze in the wind as you get up, like, 40, 50 feet, then there's a breeze. Holy crap, boss. But I would like to do that again. I would like to do it because at the top of that move, you're supposed to, like, put your, put your foot through the rung of the ladder and hook it around to the other rung so that you're, like... You, you lace your knee and your foot through the rungs of the ladder so that you can't fall. And then you take your hands free and you lean back like that off the ladder. And that's how you complete the move. Fortunately, the ladder was not available to my class the day that we were supposed to do that for my fire academy because I was out on a call. Good thing because I was not going to be able to do the, lock, the knee lock. I mean, I would have made myself, I would have strapped on the depends and gone ahead up that ladder, but... My knee was not going to go through there. So that's just a little thing. I think when I get a bunch of fat off my legs, I'll be able to do that and get my mobility back, get my, you know, get my range of motion back in my knees. 
visit Paris. Okay, well that may not seem like a big deal, but for one, obviously I don't have the money, but also I don't want to fly as a big fat person. I mean, honestly, the last time I, I weighed 325 and I flew in a plane, I was just absolutely goddamn miserable. It was like an hour and a half flight and I thought I was gonna die. Like I can't bend my knees enough, first of all, to be comfortable in that amount of knee leg space. Um, and secondly, like that, that seat divider was literally jam left a bruise on my hip. It was jamming me so hard. So visit Paris, I think just because of my kinder, gentler approach to myself and my whole life anyway, whenever I do visit Paris, I will go ahead and do it in a first class seat. So I'll be comfortable. I'll be able to like live and survive it. I'm not trying to squeeze myself in like a cargo refugee, but someday I would love to visit Paris, you know? I'd like to have enough money to visit there. I would love to, like, be thin enough to walk in and buy clothes somewhere. I don't think thin people can really understand. Like, all my life, I've never been, you know, if I see fashions on the internet or whatever, that's fine. It's not in my size. So, okay, that it's, you know what I mean? It's not about me. Never has been. When I started gaining weight at age seven, there was really the only plus size store was Lane Bryant. And that was for, like, 45-year-old women who worked downtown, basically. So, um, it was dismal, man. I had, I, you know, plus the way my mom was crazy and didn't want to buy me clothes. It's, it's a long, complicated story, but suffice to say that, um, I would love to go to Paris and buy clothing there. And like, I, I mean, I already live in Los Angeles. I could go up to Santee Alley up here in the fashion district. And if I, I mean, they have a plus size area. If I had money, I could go and buy plus size clothes there. Probably I'll get when I get a little money, I probably will treat myself. I need some more clothes. Um, but, you know, I'm looking forward to being just part of the world in a way that I never have been. Like, every clothes store that I walk past, I could walk in there and buy something. That would be the first time in my life that I could have that experience. I don't think people can really understand what it's like to have this entire section of the economy is not for you. <laughs> it's something you need like a, like if shoes like if people had some crazy shoe situation where they they couldn't buy it then they would understand you know I don't know how to even explain how much it sucks to not be able to buy clothes but I would love to buy clothes in Paris there's a thing that they do at the beach here which I think is called windsurfing um, but it's like a giant kite in the sky and they're on a surfboard holy crap that's fucking amazing I can't wait to do that Okay, there's also a tribal belly dance um, group. I don't know if that group is still running around, but the women who are who were in the group called the Indigo, the tribal belly dancers, Rachel Bryce and Sharon Kihara, there's a bunch of them. I would love to dance belly dance with those ladies at some point. And the thing about them is that they all have their own very special tribal belly dance look in terms of their um, costuming and their makeup and everything. They've put a lot of time into creating a belly dance persona, and I guess that's kind of what I'm driving at with that. Do a ladder bailout. Ladder bailout is a, one, another thing from Fire Academy that I was just not physically fit enough to do. Like, if I was inside a window on the second floor and the place was burning, um, yeah, I'm going to have to just jump out head first and slide down that ladder head first like a big fat sausage coming down on my face. But there's a nice way to do it where you flip around from your elbow and you go... But I didn't have the, I was too fat and I did not have the core strength for that. Um, do a plank. Oh my gosh, I've seen people do plank push up where they can um, basically just stand on their two hands with their, you know, your two hands are here and then your legs are up in the air. Not easy, but you have to be thin and have hella good abs. Swim with dolphins. My gosh, I would love to do that. Skate with the Boston Bruins. My gosh, I would love to do that. I don't know how to skate. Fuck it, but whatever. Learn to spin poi with the Maori. That's another thing. Like, how would you go to New Zealand? It's really far away if you are too fat and you don't want to get on a plane. So I would love to go to New Zealand and learn a lot of things about the Maori, but one thing I would love to learn is how to spin poi. You know, the little the fire spinning that they do, um, that's a traditional Maori thing. And that's very, not only good fitness, it's super cool, it's fun to watch, and I would love to do that. So that's my bucket list. I've taken 20 minutes now to introduce you to the girl in the before videos. I feel good about who I am, and I'm gonna feel really great about the body transformation that I'm doing, because it makes me feel like I'm in charge of my life for the first time ever. 
As I said, when I worked as a paramedic, I weighed 302 pounds. It was the most stubborn, aggravating thing that I could not get back into the 200s for nothing. It was so annoying. And so that's what's going to change this year. You know what I mean? I'm going to shred all the way through the 200s. Just watch me, folks. Just watch me. So thank you for tuning in. I'm going to be on the lookout for more information about the other radical body transformation people. And I'm excited. We're going to do this. We're going to crush it. And stay tuned here. You can subscribe to me at TeresaValentino.com here on the YouTube. Leave me a comment, like, subscribe, all that.